boy. I sure do love Pokemon Snap. It certainly is a blast to play and will sadly in no way help with my seething depression that is incoming within the next 4 to 5 years. And I can print the pictures I take with the Blockbuster trademark. I can't wait to do this same exact thing with Pokemon Snap 2. 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 It's here. It's finally here. This is one of the happiest days of my life, minus, uh, minus Blockbuster. I've been looking forward to this game since, uh, well, before it was even announced, to be honest with you. Pokemon Snap was a game I really liked back when I was a kid. It was fun, cute, and had such an impact on my childhood that I made a video on it years later. Psst. Watch it. I think you'll like it. So, before going into what new Pokemon Snap is, let's talk about what the first Pokemon Snap was, but the... The too long didn't read version. It's an on rail shooter, but camera instead of gun. You go to Pokemon habitats, take photos of said Pokemon, and then Professor Oaks grades your photos on this nonsensical scoring system while occasionally being horny. Wonderful. Also, this guy's name is Todd Snap, and he is, he is pretty cool. There, you are now caught up. So, a little over 20 years go by since its release, and boom, Nintendo drops a new Pokemon Snap reveal trailer that had me hype at 9 in the morning. I was ready to run through my neighbor's freaking brick wall. Gonna wake everybody up. Them, their children, their dogs, I don't even know if they have children, but if they do, they're waking up. Fast forward through whatever mistake 2020 was, and here we are at today's date, uh, whatever the piss it is, and new Pokemon Snap is out. Okay, cool, now you're caught up, let's go. You start the game off by creating your Pokemon Photographer, aka you choose one of these, uh, one of these eight pre-made avatars. Once you choose the lifeless husk you're gonna possess on this journey, you get a cutscene of your character walking to this lab and meeting Professor Mirror and his assistant, Rita. The Professor, uh, he, um, uh, he, and he... Oh no, he's hot! <clears throat> they inform us that they want to research every island in this region since it's only ever been done once before and that was about a hundred years ago. You may be asking, what region is this? Is it Kanto for the 37th time? Nope. Johto? Nuh-uh. Galar? Good guess, but no. Sinnoh? STOP TALKING! Why, it's the Lentil region, a completely new region in the Pokemon universe that's filled with islands for you to explore. These islands are all vastly different from one another. The habitats range anywhere between jungles to deserts to volcanoes and so on. And like Professor Muir said, these islands haven't been traversed in years, so the only logical thing is it's in a kid out there. Apparently, there's something called the Illumina Phenomenon that's going on within some of these islands. Now, what is the Illumina Phenomenon? Well, it's whenever you click that subscribe button, hit the bell for notifications so you can get more Wolf Gale song content. Also, honestly, I, uh, I have no freaking clue because we're just a dumb kid. Don't worry, I'll explain it later in the video. It's pretty cool that there's an actual story to this game. Sure, it's nothing thought-provoking or anything like that, but I appreciate that there's a storyline. Also, adding voice acting to this game is a really nice touch. I was pleasantly surprised by its addition, and the voice actors do a really great job. Listen up, team. I'm going to give you a breakdown of the survey. But that's enough about the story. Let's get to the good part. Let's get to take a pictures! Well, take, uh, take a tutorial on taking pictures first. Yep, uh huh. I, I'm pretty sure I got it. Up your shot. Pretty sure I got it. Thank you. Th thank you. I th thank you. I get it. I understand. I get what you're saying. Oh my god, this. Okay, this is Pikachu. Let me. Yeah, yes, I will do just that. Oh my god, look, look at him. Look at him wagging his butt. One minute, 37 seconds later. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. That, uh. <laughs> that tutorial felt like it lasted three hours. Oh well, who the piss cares? Time to go. Oh my god, I'm already in love. First off, I want to gush about how much I love the fact that they start off with Dodrio being just right there from the moment you start the first level. It, it's such a nice callback. Freaking love it. It's so, it's so good. I just, blah, 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 blah. thank you, Bandai. Anyway, camera speed is a little slow to my liking, but thankfully you can speed it up, which of course I'm going to do. I take more of a chaotic approach. I'm the kind of person that likes to take photos quickly rather than take my sweet old time. I see a photo I like and I take it right then and there rather than, you know, lining up the photo. So speed is the way to go for me. The only tool at your disposal starting off is being able to zoom in your camera, but it's very apparent that you'll be getting new items and tools throughout your journey that are going to help you interact with these Pokemon. I gotta say, I'm thoroughly impressed with how gorgeous new Pokemon Snap looks. Everything feels 
alive in this world. The Pokemon are interacting with the environment around them as well as the other Pokemon. It's also very apparent that there's going to be a lot to do in each level, and you see that right off the bat. I was turning around trying to catch everything with my camera, but but I knew I was missing so much going on around me, I just, I just had to go through that level again. But, big but, here's where the biggest difference in gameplay comes when compared to the original Pokemon Snap. In New Pokemon Snap, these areas change over time. The more good photos you take, the more you level up the area. As these areas hit higher levels, you see Pokemon begin to feel more comfortable with you around, leading to more shots, and even new Pokemon are going to show up. This adds a ton of replayability for these levels because you're always noticing something different each run you do, even if you haven't leveled up the area in a while. There's also branching paths that can lead you to Pokemon that have been hiding this entire time. So, how do you level up these areas? Well, Jank Scoring System! Glad to see Professor Muir is as horny as Professor Oak. Pokemon Snap was notorious for its jank scoring system. You could you could take a beautiful photograph of a Charmander and Oak's gonna look at you like, Yeah, that's uh, that's cool and all, but this photo of a Charmander's shoulder and two of the Pokemon clearly out of focus is way better. 430 points. Why did I just give Hoax Smokers cough? What the piss is wrong with me? Now, with new Pokemon Snap, it isn't as bad, but it's certainly still prevalent, and I wouldn't have it any other way. Like, would this even be a proper sequel without these nonsensical scores? No. No, it wouldn't. This feature, if that's what you want to call it, adds a fun new layer to the game. Like, a photo that seems so bad can somehow get a huge score because... Why the piss not? I crave that kind of chaos, though I can understand why it would annoy other players. Thankfully, Professor Mir gives you the option to choose which photo you want to keep, even if one scores higher than the other, but like I said, the jank isn't as bad as it was with Nintendo 64 version, so you're not going to really run into that problem too often. You can also save photos to your personal album, so you're not limited to one photo per Pokemon per run, though you can only choose one photo to be graded. Photos are scaled anywhere between one to four stars, four stars being the absolute rarest. The four star ones are special occasion photo opportunities, like you have to snap a photo of Quagsire jumping into the water. Freaking love that boy. Look at him and love him! Three stars are rare photos that can involve Pokemon interacting with one another or doing some cool behavior. And the difference between one and two star photos is... well... Okay, but seriously though, sometimes it makes zero sense. With the addition of this 4 star model, you're constantly wondering what poses or interactions you could be missing with these Pokemon, giving you incentive to mess with the Pokemon in the wild areas to see what happens. This can cause a surprise Pokemon to show up or, you know, cause a Pokemon to get caught up in a tornado or thrown into a whirlpool. There's secrets in each area, and the more you level these areas up, the more comfortable Pokemon are with you around, allowing them to loosen up and act in ways you've never seen before, and, you know, sometimes new Pokemon are going to show up as well. Not only do these areas level up to show you new things, but quite a few of these levels have day and night cycles. So, Pokemon you see during the day are going to act very differently during the night, and throw in that, you know, you're going to see some different Pokemon at night as well. These day and night cycles can also be leveled up, giving you even more opportunities to see how these Pokemon fully interact with their habitat. I mean, sure, some people may see this as padding since it's the same course, but there's so much more variety and mystery added that it makes these runs feel fresh and exciting. And the more you level these up, the more areas and story you unlock. Well, look who it is. Todd. Hey, Professor. It's been a while. He's... he's here. The prodigal son has returned. Now let's talk about the Illumina Phenomenon. It's... um... It's... it's where plants and Pokemon glow. That's kind of about it. But how they introduce it is through these sort of boss levels. In certain regions, if you level them up enough, you'll be met with a boss, if you will. Now, I'm not going to go into spoiler territory outside of the first one since it's the most simplistic of them all, as well as uh, being on the freaking box art. The first boss introduces you on how to make the Illumina phenomenon happen. See, you throw these orbs at specific plants that cause Pokemon to interact with them and get all glowy and do some cool things. But the catch is you can only capture photos of them while they're, you know, being glowy. If you try to do it before then or after then and they're not glowy, it, it just doesn't work. Now, with these boss levels, you can also level them up, introducing you to even more cool things, but I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you guys, the first boss kinda drags on. Like a lot. 
The other bosses are much better, and some even require skill, but the first one, it, it just, it does not do a good job. It, it's, it's, it's not good. But speaking of dragging on, thankfully you'll get this neat item that lets you zoom through levels much faster. However, in, uh, in contrast to the first game, in new Pokemon Snap, you don't get this item until super late into the game. Pr pretty much towards the end of the main story. And that kind of makes the item feel, I don't know, pointless? Like, sure, it does help towards the end, but it would have been much nicer to have the item earlier in the game, as some levels can feel like they're just dragging and chugging along, it's especially if you're looking for specific Pokemon or requests. Requests? Oh. Huh. Kinda, kinda surprised I forgot to bring this up until now. Failure. Throughout your journey, multiple characters will ask you to take photos of Pokemon in situational moments. These requests can sometimes give you pretty helpful hints such as learning a new Pokemon out, or how certain Pokemon will react to, say, throwing an apple at them a, a bunch of times. Except my love, dang it! These are actually a ton of fun, and it shows you that each area has more for you to explore and find out. Don't forget to turn them in though, because there are, uh, there are a lot. However, the only reward you're going to get for turning these in are things to add to your online profile. Yeah, this is on brand for me. The only thing I really wish they would have implemented is a way to look at your requests while you're going through the area. Because, man, is it hard to remember what leaf structure you're looking for. I, I don't remember what the plants look like! The gameplay and environment really pushed this game forward. I said in my original Pokemon Snap video that I loved the game because of how natural the Pokemon felt. And new Pokemon Snap gives you that same exact feeling, but in a fresh new way. A and minus Blockbuster. Overall though, I would say New Pokemon Snap is one of the best Pokemon spin-off titles. Sure, this game isn't going to be for everyone. If taking photos of Pokemon isn't your thing, then you aren't going to enjoy this. It's, it's as simple as that. But you can tell how much love and effort went into New Pokemon Snap. Everything feels so alive and you can't stop smiling while you play it. It's a feel-good game and, and honestly, I feel this is one of the best Pokemon games to come out in the past 10 years. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate every single one of you for just, you know, sticking around till the end. Or watching some of it, even though you're probably not listening to this part. But anyway, I still appreciate you, even if you clicked off earlier. You're all wonderful and 10 out of 10s. I want to give a shout out to all my patrons real quick. Thank you all so much for supporting me throughout everything. You're all wonderful and I, I, I cannot thank you enough. Also, a couple special shout outs to like to Jordan, Louie, and Lisa. Thank you all so much for Cloud Connection. Also, thank you. You guys are wonderful. 10 out of 10s also. I mean, obviously you knew that before, but you're, you're 10 out of 10 again. 10 out of 10 too. That, that sounds like a bad math problem. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you all in the next video. Take care.